Hey people, Down Phoenix here, and welcome back to what I'm playing. Today we're going to be checking out 3D Sin, which is a exciting new emulator now available on Steam, and it also has a VR version available as well for anybody that's interested in that. So 3D Sin is a NES emulator, Sin being NES backwards, of course. So that's the kind of games you can expect to play. And there's, there's not a lot of games supported right now. What they have done with this emulator is quite amazing, and I want to kind of show this off for you guys. So let's take a look. As you can see, it plays the classic NES games like we remember them, but unlike what you would get from a PC emulator or Raspberry Pi or anything of that nature, it doesn't just simply try to emulate the game in the way that it originally looked as best as possible, but it actually tries to enhance the visual experience. It adds 3D effects and shadows and all kinds of other nifty effects that you can see here on screen. So we've got a little over 60 games that are currently supported using this program. Uh, you have to set your own custom thumbnails using the game screens themselves in order to show them off since I guess they don't want to step on any copyright things. But of course, outside of the games, which have to be designed in a specific way in order to implement these 3D effects properly, you have your various features that you would, of course, expect in your emulators, like the load states, of course, which will show exactly where you left off in the game. You can, of course, save your saves because you have to be able to save in order to load right. And then, of course, finally, you have your settings where you can adjust your graphical options and change volume and speed of the emulation. You can adjust the controls and all that good stuff. So you have everything you need for a proper emulation experience. You have a lot of options with how you want to manipulate the look of the games themselves using the right triggers, for example, as well as your right stick. You can kind of tilt the camera, zoom in and out, and do all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, you can hold the menu button for the system in order to reset the position back to the normal play field. So you do have a lot of options on how you want to display the games. I guess you could say it's somewhat of a gimmick, but it gives you the freedom to decide how you want the game to look as much as you can, really, since these are still original Nintendo games, and they're trying to do their best, of course, to emulate that original look. These aren't games that are completely modified. Rather, the software has some modifications in order to allow the 3D effects and as you'll notice in some games, those 3D effects are more pronounced than others. Some games don't really utilize it that much, whereas others will do quite a lot to adjust the look of the game. This can even greatly vary depending on the game. Contra during its normal side-scrolling stages uses this excellently, whereas these stages that should have a really cool 3D effect here, it's really just kind of a flat plane. So that is a little disappointing because I think this 3D effect could have been really cool, but I can imagine that the developers might have toyed around with it. Maybe they couldn't get it to quite look right with this game, so maybe that's why they stuck with a more traditional approach in this case. In some cases, the 3D effect can be really impressive with certain titles and give you a new experience in terms of the visual styling of these games. Excite Bike here, as you see, is actually a really notable example of this because instead of simply mirroring these effects in a 3D space, they actually kind of changed the initial perspective of the game 
and it really offers a cool look on this classic NES game. It really breathes a little new life into it. And of course, there's some others that I would really like to show off, including some light gun based games, which in case you didn't know, you can play these kinds of games on emulators using a mouse, but it really offers a new way to play them just based on how the visual styling changes things. Of course, most games don't use it in such a strong way, like Excite Bike, for example, or Duck Hunt. Most games use a subtle approach, like you see here with Bubble Bobble, where the characters are still more or less 2D, but you do have some slight adjustments to the environments that give it just that little bit of extra touch of visual flair. And I think that they made that cause for the right reasons, because Obviously, playability is the most important factor when it comes to playing these classic games. So I think they really did the right approach here, and as I said, it really does add a lot to the game. It is important to note that this emulator is still in early access, is in active development. They're planning on fixing things and adding more games for support and things like that. So you will occasionally encounter some issues like the sound glitch you just heard where the music was supposed to loop around, but it kind of did it in a very abrasive way. It didn't do it in a smooth way that you're used to playing classic games like Castlevania. Now that being said, the sound itself sounds spot on, it's just that there's still some issues that need to be worked out. I would have to say I'm pretty pleased with the initial selection of games that are available with this. There are a lot of classic NES titles that you can play right now if you buy this emulator, which, yes, buy, I know, because most emulators are free, but this emulator does more than what you would get from a traditional emulator because it's not just simply trying to emulate the games as you remember them, but it offers a new lease on life for some of these games, some new visual flares that were not previously possible. So I think it really does offer a lot of value, especially since it's a pretty fair price. You're going to have a lot of playtime potentially with this selection of games. You know, you have games like, of course, Chippendales Rescue Rangers and DuckTales, other Capcom classics, classic Nintendo games, of course, including the very impressive Super Mario Bros. 3. But that being said, you do have to keep that in mind. Out of the several hundred games available on the NES, there's only a little over 60 games currently supported. And in case you're wondering, yes, of course, one of the best NES games ever made, The Legend of Zelda, is supported here. And it looks phenomenal with the way they set it up. I think overhead games in general with this particular program really shine a lot and it just I don't know it just looks great it's a fun new way to experience these kinds of classic games so I highly recommend checking out 3d sin at the very least you should follow up on their progress and kind of keep an eye on it for whenever they add more updates and all kinds of other stuff because I've been having a lot of fun playing these classics yet again you know, of course, they're classic games to begin with, and this emulator would be 
pretty moot if they were trying to say emulate Atari Jaguar games or something like that or some other obscure console that uh, nobody really cares about but the NES is on the top of many people's lists a lot of people grew up with the system and it helped kind of shape who they are today so that includes myself obviously because I am a huge NES fan but just been having a lot of fun with the simulator. I want to let you guys know we're going to take a couple weeks break from what I'm playing. So I'll see you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. But uh, till then, Down Phoenix out.